All right, so next up, we got a heavyweight bout that I am so excited about. Been following Mr. Bozer around a little bit lately. Mm -hmm. Nice mullet man there from Alberta. And so, you know, I'm super excited. We've seen him fight a few times now. He's really making that come up and he's taking on the pit bull, the veteran in Andre Arlovsky. It's very excited about this one. Yeah, so I'm absolutely excited about this fight too. I mean, I'm sure you've seen Arlovsky fight. You know, this is a dude, I look at his face and I'm like, yeah. I feel like I've seen you fight 20 times, but I don't remember a single one of them. Yeah, so I mean, he's got the he's got the mouth guard with the teeth in them. He's the scariest guy. <laughs> yeah, back in the day, he looked like a real vampire fighting in the UFC. It was phenomenal. I loved every bit of it. <laughs> he's shredded. He's still shredded. He's a little thicker now, but he was, he's a beast. He's an absolute monster fighting at this age, you know, 29 and 19 record. The man's an absolute legend. You know, if there's ever an MMA Hall of Fame, I think he belongs in the UFC Hall of Fame. He's touched UFC gold, so he's been a heavyweight champion before. These are things that, wow. you know, yeah, this guy's a legend of the sport. Now, all right, let's talk about our boy Tanner Bozer. So why do I think this is a bit of a, a bad fight for Arlovsky? And I think it's only because of Bozer's technical striking. I think that he showed pretty good cardio in the second round when he knocked it, when he knocked out his last opponent. That's where I believe mm -hmm. that it's going to come into play with Arlovsky, right? Arlovsky's a great, great technical striker as well, but he's also going to try to aim, you know, he's, he's trying to take your head off. And so if, if you're throwing the same way, you got to be able to move around. Tanner Boza's footwork is actually quite good. He moves around very well for a heavyweight. And I think those are the kind of guys that might pose, especially the elder Arlovsky, a bit of problems, but he's an athlete as well. You know, like that's the thing about Arlovsky. It makes me a bit fearful to even take either one of these guys in terms of lines, but... I do think he's going to go into this as the underdog. I mean, I, I know there's probably something you want to say about some Canadian MMA fighters right now, but... Yeah, I was going to say, I yeah. just want to give a shout-out to some Canadian fighters, you know. Mm -hmm. at the, they seem to be breeding very well. We got a nice young talent coming in, mm -hmm. Charles Jordan, we saw, who got robbed in his fight. Uh, you know, my Twice, boy... Remember, we thought he beat Andre Feely. Uh, Andre Feely mm -hmm. just... Uh, lost to Bryce Mitchell, but we thought he won that fight. He lost a split decision to Feely. Then he got the draw, you know, in his last fight. Poor guy, you know, he, he deserves better than that. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, our boy Dawoodoo from Calgary, I'm still waiting for that Flames game. Don't forget about that. But, you know, it's nice to see all this young Canadian talent really emerging onto the scene in the UFC. Yeah, and I, and I think you nailed it, right? The, the two the two guys that I would kind of handpick myself are definitely Dawoodoo and... Um, and Jordan, I think they've shown the longevity over the course of a fight to really perform at what I don't want to call championship level. But when you think about the UFC in tiers, I think those are the guys you can kind of scope out from all this, you know, influx of fighters you're seeing. And, you know, there's a new level now. You know, fighting Andre yeah. Feely in that fight was no joke. And I, and I think... I'll give a shout out good. to our girl Jillian Robertson as well. She's been smashing. So go Canada. <laughs> right? Jillian's... Jill, you know, of all the fighters, I mean, Jillian Robertson might be the top Canadian prospect, right? When you really think mm -hmm. about it. Now, let's going back into this fight. Tanner Bozer has the chance to kind of, you know, leapfrog all of them. I think a big win over Orlovsky puts him in a very empty heavyweight division, at least in that contender spot where he's going to have to take on beasts. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Where we're seeing guys like Rosenstruck. We're seeing guys like... You know, Francis Naganu. These are the guys. Overeem is a tough fight right now, you know? At, right. at this point, you know, Walt Harris is having to fight absolute monsters to try and get himself to a title shot if he ever wants one. So that's what's going to be tough. Right now, this is a great fight for him. So looking at the odds, I would say he's about max and minus 220, minus 230 favorite. I can't see Arlovsky as the favorite, but I can see him as maybe as good as a plus 110, plus 120 dog. You actually nailed this one. Don't even need to divulge into it anymore. Uh, Bozer is about a minus 240, minus 250 favorite. Wow. And are my boy Arlovsky? Yeah, about a plus 220. Uh, plus 220. That sucks. Okay, cool. Good to know. Yeah, so it, it looks like Vegas is leaning towards our Canadian boy as well. Most deaf. Let's go mullet man. Mullet man, mullet man. Ooh, I love you, mullet man. <laughs> <laughs> 